it's time for the bit I kind of suck at. What colour is Mushroom Dinosaur Spit? Welcome to Castle of Paint. Today we're going to be painting something mean and green. For people that know 40k, they know I was on about orcs and not the Hulk. Although they do share the characteristics I've mentioned. Some of my first models when I got into 40k, around the age of A, were orcs. And up until semi-recently I had a large bad moon army. So this piece is going to be a homage to my past. Also, this orc is riding a mushroom dino, so I was sold, from first glance. I'm really into 3D printing these days, but I get a very visceral enjoyment from piecing things together in the old way. This is all pretty standard Games Workshop fare, and so let's speed things up a tad. Built. That was easy. Previously, I never cared too much about the gaps in my minis. They were supposed to be on the tabletop, too far away to see, but not anymore. As you can tell from the footage, I am not great at filling gaps with Milliput. I have a plethora of tools, but still need a lot more practice. I use these sculpting tools to push the milliput into the cracks and add some water to try and blend it into the plastic. This kind of works, but definitely needs a lot of sanding afterwards. Bad gap filling complete, sanding complete. Time to drill some holes in his feet and mount the mini to a block of wood. This is just so I have something to hold onto during the painting process. I take my pin vise, drill some holes and super glue some paper clips in. Then we do the same process into the wood. Now it's time to add some paint. I'm going to paint the Squigasaur, the thing our orc is riding, in a purple colour. I'm going to mix my purple colour and try some wet blending. I add black, white and the main purple to my palette. Then I mix up a base tone and a highlight tone. Let's apply this onto the model. The dark tone goes all over the mount, trying to leave any no Squigasaur bits alone. Now it's time for the bit I kind of suck at. I want to add my mid tone to the model and leave all the darkest parts alone. This is easy enough. But then I want to add my highlight colour and blend them together on the model. The basic idea is that they will both be very wet and I can push around the paint on the areas where they will come into contact with each other. I had some mild success here as you can see, although the cost of my hand gets in the way of the shot a lot of the time. I continue to try this over the rest of the model, taking in my unmixed purple and adding it in other places like the tail, then maybe adding some of the base tone in the dark areas. Now we want to hit some more of the details. I take the white and add it to the mid-tone, trying to add this to sections that will be hit with light or the hard edges. Here's my palette now, and it looks a mess. I really need to practice my mixing and blending, but for now, it's time to move on. Not something of great import, but a piece that needs to be done is the inside of the mouth. I take a pinky red colour from Citadel as a base and put it everywhere inside the huge gaping mouth. Then we add some bone to the mix and highlight the front of the tongue a bit. Next are his spines and hard bits, I suppose. I suppose it is a he. Does the mushroom dinosaur have a gender? Anyway, I painted this grey as it's a nice colour to mix in with the purple. Taking a neutral grey, I paint this everywhere and then highlight with progressively more medium sea grey. I really don't know how I should be highlighting these, so I wing it. I just try to go brighter close to the top. These parts have loads of odd angles and the bits on the tail probably should be in shadow but I'm not sure I'm yet there with my skills to make it look as it should. It's teeth time baby. This dino has some massive gnashers on him. All the better for crunching up enemies and they're kind of a focal point of this part of the mini. I follow a recipe that I used recently on another model. Start with a brown colour and then mix in with bone. Here you can see we threw down the base coat. And because I tend to go all over the place when I'm doing a paint job, I then base coat the metal mix. I take my metallic mid-tone, add dark grey and put it all over the metal bits. Back to the teeth now. We had a very small amount of bone to the brown each time to attempt to get a nice blend. Every time I add some, I attempt to avoid the layer below and always leave a teeny tiny bit of the brown in the very darkest bits. I keep adding more until I use the bone colour unmixed. And that should only be on the tips of the teeth and the hardest edges. You will see this type of process repeated for the yellow later. With the teeth done, let's get onto some of the other parts of our dino. The lever strap that attaches the saddle is a layer of brown paint. With this one, I'm not going to add anything to darken it down because I want it to be pretty bright final result. So this brown starter colour is going to be my shadow. Once again, I got bored and I moved on to a different base coat as opposed to continuing with the lever. This time it was for the dark gold bronze. I mixed Balthazar gold from Citadel with some dark grey. 
When it comes to the metal, I tend to not add as many layers as I do for the other parts of the Mini, which we will see when I come back to the metal. I say back to the metal because I'm now on the lever. It's time to complete this by moving the brightness scale up. I add an off-white to my brown base color and paint it on, always thinking about where I want to keep the shadow. I'm trying to be scratchy here, something I'm not very well practiced at. I want to add texture to this. And when I add a bit more off-white to the brown, as you can see now, I do not always highlight in a standard way. I want the highlights to give it the illusion of being made of leather. I need more practice here for sure. With that leather looking pretty decent, I want to get this robo leg done. All good dinos need a robot leg. The previous layer here has a mix of silver metal plus dark grey. Now we're going to add just the unmixed silver metal colour. I'm going to be very particular here, leaving a large amount of the darker colour showing. This is because metal is just a bad mirror. The metals would reflect the light a lot, so we want these top areas where our imaginary sun would be to really look different and bright. Now, this is an orc, and in 40k, they are not so great at keeping their technology in good working order. So I want to rust it up a bit. I take the always good Agrax Earth shade and add the shade all over the metal parts. I then take the silver color again and add back a highlight, this time covering less of the area than before. Finally, I use the brightest silver I have and touch up on the very brightest parts of the silver area like the rivets and the edges. Back to the dark gold or bronze, I use my unmixed dark gold color and apply it, but leave the darker base tone to give me shadows. I then mix a bit of silver into the dark gold and apply it over the bits I think the light would hit. Finally, I take the very same crazy bright silver I used on the silver metal and apply it to the tips of the edges of the gold. Let's finish this leggy leg by adding the yellow. Yellow is the color of the Bad Moon's orc tribe, a tribe known to be very rich on account of them having the most teeth. Teeth, of course, passing for orc currency in the 40k universe. I mean, what else would you use? Yellow is normally very hard to paint, so let's see how I do. I take a flat yellow from Vallejo and mix it with corn red from Citadel. This gives me a very orange base color. I think maybe I'll mix the yellow with a different color next time, but at least it covered very well with the first pass. Now we take the process I've talked about before and change the mix a little. Apply in a layer, then change the mix some more. Layer, change, layer. Here I'm always trying to make the yellow more prominent every time, as in the end I wanted to read as bright yellow. As per always, I think of the parts where shadows were full and try to leave the dark colors there. Eventually, I'll do a layer which is just the flat yellow and nothing else. On the rounded edges of the panels, I'm trying to make the brightest part at the top of the curve, as this is the part where more light would hit. Attempting these gentle blends is what should make it look real. You'll notice a lot of the layers look a bit watery. This is because I want them thinned enough to not overpower the previous layer. Again, trying to blend it properly. Once I have applied my flat yellow color, I add some ice yellow to the mix and start to add thin lines in the edges and also with scratches. The very final layer will just be small dots of ice yellow. This squigasaur has got a bit excited and is drooling, so I need to paint this detail too. What color would a mushroom's dinosaur spit be? What color is human spit? How do I paint this? I decided to paint this gray and move on with my life. I use a neutral gray and then give it a quick highlight with a lighter gray. Maybe this needs a gloss varnish later? To add the finishing touches to our good dino boy, it's time to paint his eyes. Eyes are always hard. I had a quick look at reptile eyes and decided to do red. So I paint the whole thing with a dark red and add a slightly brighter red. Now I add a little bit of yellow to try and form the shape of the pupil. Then I take pure black and do a thin line to make it like a reptile's eye. Finally, we do a white dot to finish off the eye. A little reflection in the, in the eye as it were. I'm pretty happy with the result here and the eyes are always a problem. With the Dino Dino done, let's get some of the extra details sorted. I'm going to paint the gun that they have sticking out of the body of this poor creature. He lost a leg, has a gun bolted onto his torso. This is going to be one very unhappy dino. I'll follow the same steps as we did on the leg, so let's kill the chatter and speed through this part.
Here is the spin of our dino complete. I'm pretty happy with this, but there are some areas that I need more practice on, like adding the texture and the wet blending. Now we can move on to what is arguably the more important part of the piece, the rider. Our orc warboss himself, shouting to his boys to get into the fight. Let's start with something no self-respecting warboss should leave home without. His trousers or pants for our Americans. These orc models have a lot of brown parts. So I go through my collection and grab a number of different browns, all in different hues. Once again, my hand decides it wants to be part of the show. After we paint his trousers, it's time for straps and belts. This is just picking a brown with a slightly different hue and applying it as a base coat. For his booties, I paint them dark gray. Nothing special. We just can't give him more bits of brown as there is still more brown to add than you can see right now. As we have previously talked about, I tend to paint where my brain takes me. We can see what a mistake this is by leaving his skin which is under lots of stuff to last. Anyway, I move back to his trousers before basing everything. I add some white, see bone, to the base trouser brown and start to layer. As always, we leave some of the base layer behind to be our shadow color. Once we finish that, we add a bit more bone and try to bring up the brightness. Always trying to add this layer where I think the light would hit. Finally, we hit all the hard edges with a color that is almost approaching pure bone. On the belt, we did the same process, but this time I did something slightly different. I used a light gray as my mixing color, not bone. This produced an interesting effect, kind of giving it a blue gray tinge to the belt. After the first layer, we add more gray and we continue to layer. The keen-eyed among you might have noticed my hair in some shots. This is sadly gonna continue. Let's get back to what we should have done earlier, base the rest of the model. I do the silver metallics, just like we did earlier, mix metal with dark gray, and apply this everywhere. With the base done on the metallics, let's get that yellow base coated. Just like the yellow before, I mix flat yellow with some red. It's interesting here that I think this base color is a lot darker than it was on the previous yellow section. Painting is always a learning process, and I think if I were to do this model again, I would do all the yellow ones just to keep it consistent. Next, we base coat the dark gold or bronze, same as before. Some final base coats are applied, going back to the other clothing parts on the saddle and add some straps on the spare and ammunition. To finish off the booties, I make some lighter gray, mix it with my dark gray base coat and start to layer on the boots. After a few layers, we finish with pure medium gray. Let's move to the saddle bags and the saddle itself. I take the base color and add some off-white to the mix trying the scratchy technique from before to try and provide some leather or hide texture to these parts. We keep adding more and more off-white to bring up the highlights, as you've heard, going for edges and the flat parts where some light would hit, just like it's been done before, and try to do them from the right angle to get that texture in, kind of horizontal lines across the piece. Starting these two sections with separate base colors allows for them to look different enough for me, although perhaps I should also have used different mixing colors. It's back to making this orc look more bad moony, We've done our base coat, so we add more yellow and start layering. You can see in this process that the base color is darker because the yellow covers much worse than it did on the leg. This is okay, as we're just gonna keep going. Adding more and more yellow will eventually get us to the color we want. Each time we add some more, we aim for those areas we know the light will make the yellow shine. Let's play some orc appropriate music and get these layers done. With the yellow done, I want to do the fur. I use a dark gray mixed with some blue. I thought about what type of animal this could be from. I didn't want to do anything brown and doing it black or white could have been pretty hard. So we're doing blue gray. Once the base is done, I add some lighter gray to my mixture and overbrush the areas. I don't want to hit each part separately as that way lies madness, but I don't want to get my lighter color into the recesses. Finally, when I get to my final highlights, I start to paint onto the tips of the fur with a bright gray color. Fur cape done, it's skull time. 
I use a burnt umber color for a base, which is my new favorite brown. I use this over the whole skull and then it's time to go layering again. For this skull, we're going to add bone to the burnt umber. Very surprising. The dark brown will give us some great shadows and contrast well against the brighter bone color. This will take a lot of layering, so let's speed this up. It's blade time, and I'm not really sure what to do with this massive flat sword. I know the colors I should use to match what I did on the rest of the metal, but the brush placement and where I add my highlights are going to matter so much. When I add the wash, I also try to consider my brush strokes and give it kind of a streaky look. Hitting all the edges after that with the brighter silvers, the mid-tone and then the final highlight, finish off the look, but I feel like I could have done a lot more with the sword here. Something to look into in the next paint job. Here is a quick spin before we move on to the final part of our boy here, his great green skin. Palette cam, clean again. I want to make myself a dark green color for the base coat of his skin. I mix Warboss green from Citadel, an obvious choice, but I mix it with a much brighter green and then some yellow brown. In the end, it might not be worth it. But we started with this color I made. I paint this over all of his skin. Here I need to be careful. I can't miss now, otherwise I'll have to redo bits on the rest of the mini. This is why I mentioned previously we're doing the color that's kind of internal, lower, lower down layer wise on the mini is better. Once we've done that base coat, we take our green color and we add some more of the yellow brown and more of the lighter green to start to build up our color. You know where this is going and we add some layers. Let's add some music and get all these layers done. Stop the layers. Let's make his mouth an orky mouth color. Okay, back to the green. For the teeth, I use the same recipe as the skull on his back, and I'm just super, super careful that I don't hit any part of the green. Finally, it's time for the eyes. Orc's eyes are yellow, so I take some flat yellow, pray to the gods, try not to get my head in the way of the shot, and paint his eyeballs. A dot of black afterwards, then a dot of white, we're done. Acceptable eyes. More practice needed. Okay, done. Finished. Let's all go home. No, of course not. This boy needs something to stand on. This war boss won't be gracing any gaming tables, so he gets a badass plinth instead. Google knows all, so let's check it for something. I'm a big fan of the orc buildings from the original Dawn of War computer game. 
Here we can see a WAG banner. Let's give it a try. I'm using a new bit of software here for the 3D sculpting, so my skills are a bit lacking. I make myself a box, the right size for what I need, and then I start to cut into it where I want the front banner part to be. This bit I'll make separately and then glue it later. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can print them in two pieces and print them better, hopefully better quality. Now we have our basic shape. Let's add some details. I assume that our orky building is mostly made out of metal and trash. So we can add haphazard bits of detail like bars of metal that would be hammered or bolted into place. Maybe add some circular bits of pipes or some square boxes for cables. Maybe we can add some rivets. Let's speed this bit up and then get ready for the printing part. I'm not that happy with where we are with this, but I think I can fix it with stuff afterwards. So let's get this part printed. Here we have the printed piece. Always a good idea to give it a quick sound before we continue. As this is gonna be an orky building with a decent bit of messed up stuff and trash, Let's gather all my materials. Now it's time to make things messy. I cut up some sprue and glue them to the base. To be bits of rock or metal girders that are layered around or sticking out. Then I add some basing paste, some paper clips, and some other basing materials like cork and teeny tiny rocks. To seal this all in, I mix PV glue with water and give the top of the base a bath. This mostly works, but I probably needed to give everything longer to dry. What you didn't see me 3D sculpt, because I was having issues, is our banner. But here it is. Now let's destroy it. I'm adding bullet holes and scratches, as no orky thing would be away from battle long. I glue this onto the front and also start gluing my wooden poles. More basing paste added and we can move on. I was at a local hobby store and I found these tiny beads. I was having an issue with making very small rivets and then getting them to print properly on my FDM printer. So I decided to try these beads and glue them on with super glue. Since they have a little hole, we fix that with a blob of green stuff. Oh, and I also got some wire and twist it into shape like barbed wire. You can see that we are adding variety. The key to a decent base is that it must be organic and varied. So I keep adding more and more little things to make it different. Now I use a new thing for me, mud basing paste from Vallejo. This has a different consistency to the other basing paste I typically use. So again, it should help with the variety. What better way to make my wooden bits look like wood than by adding wood? I cut up a stirring stick and that should do the job. The base was then sprayed black as I'll be doing lots of dry brushing and I want the bits I missed to be in shadow. We add a brown to a lot of the basing paste and then get to dry brushing all of the things. We have browns, greens and greys, just go a little bit crazy. I paint the wood bits brown too and then they also get dry brushed. The concrete bits get grey paint and the metallic bits get hit with a silver. All pretty standard fare. At this point, I wash everything using a green and red wash. I pick those colors to contrast and add variety, as I said before. Once that's dry, we go back to dry brushing. Looking at the plinth, I want the silver to be brighter and I want the overall plinth to look metallic, like it was a building made out of metal plates. So I add some edge highlights, I touch up the top of the wire, kind of give it that overall feel that it's more metallic than it is organic. In homage to the reference we pulled, we need to add a quote. So I use red to paint on the only word we need. A final step and a favorite part of mine is to add some tufts and some teeny tiny green leaves, sealing off the variation on this very messed up base and adding a great splash of color. Now it's time for the big reveal.
Thank you for watching this video. There's going to be more to come. To see more or to get in touch, go to castlepaint.com.